Greetings, everyone. This is Professor Miller. We are going to be discussing Chapter 20, uh, American History 220 today. So chapter 20 covers dissent, depression, and war. Those are focused on labor during the Gilded Age. By the end of Chapter 20, you're supposed to be able to answer these questions, and we're going to touch on many of these things during this chapter, but again, this material is meant simply as a complement to what you have in the textbook. So as we discuss the, the Gilded Age, we're going to talk about the Farmers' Alliance, the rise of the populist movement, and we're very briefly going to introduce women's rights, politics, and labor, as most of that is going to be explored in Chapter 21. We've given a lot of discussion in this course to the urban center, and we haven't really talked a whole lot about what was still happening on the farm during this time period. So as people moved into the industrial centers, they left the family farm. However, the employment model changed for many Americans. Since most Americans weren't uh, growing their own foods, they had to purchase some that were made in factories. This helped create a drive for domestic products all over the United States. So places like the Midwest, uh, as the demand went up, their labor went up, even though they had fewer workers. So farmers were hurting in the labor area, and then we had this issue where there was so much product out there that the, the price of the crops fell and farmers were hurting. It was costing them more to grow the crops than they were making and being able to live. So these farmers weren't able to survive. The farmers blamed the banks, the railroads and politicians. Um, they blamed Wall Street by and large. So how do you think that the expansion of rail lines, the emerging of technology and changes of population impacted farmers during this era? So as we consider that question, we have to think about the changes, these radical changes that were occurring for farmers during this time period. As people left, as food became more, more canned or more jarred and processed, right? The life of the farmer was changing. This creates this environment where farmers are expressly unhappy. So they helped create this thing called a Farmers Alliance. Basically, it is an organization right, aimed at changing the lives of farmers and to help break up some of those monopolies in the areas where they live. So this grassroots effort ended up expanding between several states and helped bring in tens of thousands of farmers into its organization. They called for the creation of a third political party, both Republican and Democrat, right, the farmers felt that neither party was meeting their needs. So according to the Kansas Historical Society, right, the, the, the People's Party was formed out of the Farmers Alliance. In this, this organization, their whole goal was aimed at making an organization that would support farmers at the legislative level to pass laws in favor of farmers. As we consider the era, we have to consider what their goals were, what their motivations were. So yes, they needed to improve the economy so that they could survive. But you have to consider as well, there was no Department of Education during this window. So there was no way, there was no mass way of educating children. Many people had left, there's lots of children, there's no real way to educate them. So this is one of the fundamental ways that the Populist Party, the People's Party, Farmers Alliance, all the same organization, that was one of their, their, their goals was to train people, to educate people, to educate children. This brought about initiatives in farming, advanced farming as a science, and moved the field forward with technology. Education expanded into technology. Things like the tractor and the combine came to change the way of life for farmers in the Midwest. Not only that, but they were able to get their products to market faster with these new emerging technologies. So it improved their quality of life and benefited society as a whole. However, they had to get educated before they could use these things. As noted, there was no Department of Education, so this became a primary pillar of the organization. They wanted to educate children. Now, things were different in the North than they were in the South still, even though the Civil War had ended, right? This is the era, right, where, where standards still weren't equal. And then we have this issue of the, the Farmers Alliance, while it didn't exclude African Americans, it didn't welcome them in either in all areas. So folks all across the South got together and formed their own Farmers Alliance, devoted 
primarily at African Americans. They, more than their white counterparts, focused on educating children, understanding that education was the great equalizer. As this was a party focused on improving the quality of lives and families throughout the region, and it was focused on educating children and adults, this drew in tens of thousands of women. Women became politically active throughout the Midwest for the first time ever. While they did not yet have the right to vote, they were allowed to get out and speak their minds and to be active in the political process. One of those women was Mary Elizabeth Lease. There is a really great video built into the classroom about a speech that Mary Elizabeth Lease gave all throughout the state of Kansas. I strongly encourage you to watch. Mary Elizabeth Lease was unique for her time period as a lawyer, as a female in politics. Even though she didn't have the right to vote, she was extremely active. The speech that's loaded in the classroom she gave hundreds of times all throughout Kansas. She helped to lead the populist movement to help take over the Kansas State House. It was the only time a third party has ever been successful taking over an entire house of government. So in this video today, we've covered Chapter 20, Descent, Depression, and War. While we didn't cover the, the war portion of it, there are videos and articles loaded in the classroom. I strongly encourage you to read them, especially about the Homestead Strike. Now, today we did discuss the Farmers Alliance and how it created the rise of the populist movement throughout the Midwest.